Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to another one of our live TriMec Tech Tips. It's really good to see everybody again on these, these live uh, video tech tips. Uh, this is really a, a fun, unique way to show these. Uh, so I, I really like this. Please do make sure you type in uh, some comments with your questions. Or if you see something that you just really like, I'd love to see that in the comments when I look back on this. Um, I am going to be getting to the comments and the questions at the end of this. So like I said, just please do type those in. I'd love to answer any questions that come up or just sort of see what you guys enjoyed uh, from today's live video tech tip. Uh, I do want to mention we do have some more of these coming up. Uh, in fact, next week, uh, my colleague Chris Duchesne is doing a live tech tip on Wednesday, October 21st, same time, 11 a.m. Uh, and he's going to be showing how to customize your command manager. So please do tune into that one. Um, and then the next day, Thursday, October 22nd, I will actually be hosting uh, one of our other application engineers, Chang Lee, uh, while he presents a great webinar on uh, a throwback Thursday for modeling and surfacing within SOLIDWORKS. So do please tune into each of those. I think you're really going to enjoy what we have to show you. Uh, but in today's live video tech tip, we're taking a look at how we can handle design changes in both SOLIDWORKS Composer as well as SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Um, so I mentioned this a, a little bit in my last live video tech tip, and the goal here is to really make the design process more of a parallel process and less of a serial process. We really want to be able to create the sort of documentation that we create using SOLIDWORKS Composer at the same time as we're creating the actual design within SOLIDWORKS. The same thing applies to SOLIDWORKS Visualize. If I could go through and create great renderings and actually set up that rendering project prior to the finalization of that design, it ensures that I really have that content ready to deliver right off the bat as soon as that product is ready to go. So it gets that product right on our website or out to YouTube or however it is that you're marketing your designs uh, and really gives you that, that content uh, at, a, at a moment's notice, ready to go. So let's take a look at how this might work uh, in SOLIDWORKS Composer first. Um, so what you can see on my screen right now is the bench grinder operators guide for this, this bench grinder that we've created within SOLIDWORKS. Um, this is an example of the type of content we might want to create using SOLIDWORKS Composer, things like an operators guide or a maintenance manual or something like that. Um, and if we scroll down here, we can see that we do actually have a whole bunch of different images. We've got a real nice cover image here showing off some of the, the rendering uh, possibilities within SOLIDWORKS Composer. As we scroll down a little bit, we can see uh, the process for replacing this grinding wheel, how we would actually pull off that cover, the fasteners, the explode lines for those fasteners, where those go, as well as the disassembly of that actual grinding wheel subassembly with all of the additional components that go along with the grinding wheel. Moving a little bit further down, we can see we've got a parts list here showing our bill of materials along with some balloon callouts on all those components. And then if we go down even further, we can see that there's a motor inside there. We might have a part number associated with that if a user was looking to replace that motor. Uh, and we also have a bit of a caution notice that safety glasses are to be worn when operating this bench grinder. So pretty cool content that we're able to create with Composer. However, if we go over to SOLIDWORKS, uh, we might notice that you know, as we're going through and creating this, this bench grinder, we might end up with something like a design change. Uh, maybe we want to put our company logo on the actual bench grinder itself, like, for example, that SOLIDWORKS logo that you see on it there. And maybe we forgot to actually add a power button to it on the base of that, that bench grinder, and that's something we need to add as a design change. Well, if we were using a, a different technique, maybe doing screenshots or something like that, we would basically have to go and redo all of that work uh, if we weren't using something like SOLIDWORKS Composer. In Composer, though, uh, if we've gone through and created this sort of content, it's really easy to go through and update that based on that design change. So here on the left-hand side, you can see all those different views that we actually created and we utilized within that operator's guide. But of course, we did just see that there's a design change associated with this. So how do we actually deal with that in Composer? Well, fortunately, in Composer, we can just simply choose to update this SOLIDWORKS Composer document. When we do that, we can go ahead and just browse to uh, the updated SMG file. The SMG file is uh, one of the uh, file formats that we typically use within SOLIDWORKS Composer. But now, if I go ahead and choose to update this Composer document, you can see there all of that content that I've created is actually maintained, all of the, uh, the rendering uh, 
the rendering uh, types that I've, I've applied to each of those views is maintained. Um, things like the explode lines and whatnot, those are showing up here as well. Okay, and I don't even really have to go through and change anything. It's all just there for me automatically right off the bat. Uh, we do need to actually update that Word document though. And if we go over to that, you can see that that actually hasn't changed just yet. And the reason for that is even though we've updated this within the actual composer file, we haven't actually outputted the, uh, the, the 2D JPEG images yet. No big deal though, we can just do that using our high resolution image workshop. We'll go over here to our multiple tab, choose to output multiple views, and we'll go ahead and save this out. Save that right to our images folder where the previous images were. And what I wanna do here is basically just overwrite uh, the previous images that I had. So you can see here the file name template that we're using is the file name with an underscore followed by the view name. So you can see all those different view names that we're going to create just based off this file name right here. So let's go ahead and save out all those additional images. There they go. And now it's just simply a matter of going back over to uh, Microsoft Word, choosing to edit the links to the files. And if we just go ahead and grab all of these, we can choose to update now. And there we go. You can see that those images within my Word document have now been replaced with the new ones, reflecting that design change that we saw with the addition of that logo and the addition of that power button. Alrighty, so pretty cool stuff within Composer there. You can see just how, how smooth and streamlined that is as far as handling design changes. But what about SOLIDWORKS Visualize? Well, I've sort of done something similar within SOLIDWORKS Visualize. I've gone through and put all this work into setting up these bench grinder uh, renderings. So here we can see we've actually got three separate camera views showing nice renderings of this bench grinder. But again, we, we've had a, a design change applied here. So how do we go ahead and handle that within something like SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Well, let's go and open up our SOLIDWORKS Visualize project. And we're gonna see here when I open it, it's going to actually detect that there was a change made to that, that SOLIDWORKS assembly. And it actually asks me, do you want to re-import that, that assembly? Well, yep, that's, that's what I wanna do here because I do actually want to reflect that change. Um, this can be done if you're um, using two different methods to bring these into Visualize. So typically within Visualize, if you're going from SOLIDWORKS to Visualize using the add-in within SOLIDWORKS, we'd wanna make sure that you're choosing the export advanced option because that allows the SOLIDWORKS Visualize project to actually monitor that SOLIDWORKS file and detect those sort of design changes. Additionally, if you're just simply importing these uh, using SOLIDWORKS Visualize, when you import these, you would just wanna make sure that your part grouping is set to automatic. And that's going to give you that capability to actually monitor that file. Um, so here, once I've re-imported this, you can see that the process is a little bit more um, user intensive than it might be within SOLIDWORKS Composer, but it's really not that bad. It's just a matter of going back here to your scenes. Um, we do want to go back to the original scene that I had used in my original project instead of the built-in SOLIDWORKS scene that it happens to be bringing in there. Um, and we also don't want to backplate on this. I really just want to show um, these, um, the scene background in this case. And you can see right there, we're starting to get a little bit closer uh, to that first image that I had uh, originally rendered. You will notice, however, that some of the appearances look a little bit different uh, within SOLIDWORKS Visualize right now. Um, the reason for that is whenever you're re-importing geometry like this, you do have to reapply any custom appearances that, you've might, that you might have created previously within the project. Um, fortunately, though, when you're doing that, they're not lost. They're still over here within your Appearance tab, so any custom appearance that you've created uh, can then just be simply dragged and dropped onto those, uh, those components to quickly get that appearance back to whatever it is you might need to show. So we'll just go ahead and drag those back over here. Let's change to our fast rendering mode so that my, uh, my graphics card fan maybe starts spinning so, stops spinning so fast. <laughs> uh, but once I have that, we'll go and find our thin film. We'll apply that to each of these, uh, these guards here. And we're already getting very close to that same appearance that I had before. I did have a bit of a custom appearance for my sandstone uh, grinding wheels here as well. But we'll go ahead and apply those. And then finally, just some last little tweaking on the, uh, the cast aluminum appearance here. Um, if we go back and edit that, um, we do actually have to change some of the texture mapping here. Uh, we'll just change that to normal mapping for now. And that'll give us a much, uh, a much nicer appearance to that. Uh, we also might wanna just change the, uh, the tiling here, maybe make that a little bit smaller just to make it look a little bit smoother as well. Um, but right there, you can see we've um, right away 
handled that design change with just, just a few clicks, a few different drag and drops of uh, appearances. And if we go back to our camera views here, you can see, again, those same camera views that I had before are also saved. And now if I switch back and forth between these, uh, you'll see that we have the same views that we had created before. So now it would just be a matter of re-rendering these, letting the CPU and the GPU combined go through and render these out. And then we've got a really nice uh, output from SolidWorks Visualize handling that same design change that we saw on the SolidWorks Composer side. Uh, so that's all I have for you today. Hope everybody really enjoyed that. It really kind of showcases the innovation that SolidWorks is driving with products like SolidWorks Composer and SolidWorks Visualize, really allowing us to create that parallel design process uh, and really keep things running nice and smoothly and getting this content out the door even faster. Uh, so I want to thank everybody again for attending our, uh, our live video tech tip today. Um, please do type any questions or comments you have within that, that comments window. And again, check our TriMec website, our TriMec events page uh, for more of these TriMec tech talks that we have during the month of October. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. So thanks, everybody, again. Appreciate it.